recording this. There you go. Uh, recording this because there might be some people unable to make it tonight, and that way they'll be able to hear all about it after the fact. So my colleague Michael is on here as well. So we are going to be doing the presentation jointly as some of the things are for him to explain and some for me to explain. So we're both gonna be sharing all the news. If you have any questions, uh, please go ahead and plop them into the chat window there. And for that matter, I'm gonna put into the chat window here, my contact information. If you end up with any questions, you may always email me or call me if you, those come up. So there you go. All right. So yeah, let's get started. This is Treasures on the Horizon. This is the first time we've done this. We are, oh, it's not where we want to be. Michael's having to put it back, 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 back. All right, somehow I think we went the wrong direction, but regardless, we're fine. I don't know how it did that. I don't know either, and I hope I didn't touch anything. <laughs> All right, so we are putting in some wintertime tours, and normally we would just wait until later in the year, but this is actually happening because of a request from one of the folks who travels with us who said, could you get me the information on some of next year's tours as soon as possible so that I may put them into my calendar? And that got us thinking about it. And so this is coming from Roxanne. Roxanne, I hope you're on here uh, because she re requested this. And so we thought, all right, well, let's go ahead and let folks know. So here are some of the group tours this year that still have some space. Uh, many of these are okay to run, but we would love to add some more people on there. These are all in our treasure map that you should already have. If you have any questions about these, let me know. Uh, Birding Southwestern Colorado, we have Norm Lewis on that one. Amachi came back as a request. I think we have uh, some more space on that one. We are going to be seeing Amachi, Sand Creek, and some wonderful new things in Southeastern Colorado. The Crested Butte Wildflower Festival is normally one that is shared with lots of people, but we are getting our own private wildflower festival. I think a lot of people don't realize that this one is uh, basically all the same people and all the same things just for us alone. We are doing a trip to follow James Michener's book, Centennial, with Dr. Welsh uh, from Greeley. So that's going to be quite the fun time. For those of you interested in wine, we are going to have a jolly holiday there at the beginning of September, seeing the wineries of the Western Slope. This one, I just got back from doing the research tour to the historic hotels of New Mexico. So I'm very excited. My research has panned out. So we're going to have some great times seeing those fine historic inns and hotels of Northern New Mexico. And New England Fall Colors, we do have enough people to run it. We are definitely a go. In fact, I think almost all of these are definitely a go. New England Fall Colors, where we just have a couple more spots that we could add to it. So those are ones for this year. Grab them while space is still available. Okay. So new early 2023 tours. These will become available this summer. And here's how you're gonna find us. This is where you're gonna be able to sign up. My colleague, Michael's gonna walk you through how that works. And then if you write down, if you sign in that, hey, I'm interested in such and such a tour, when we get final information that will be given to you. The reason we're doing it as summer 2020 is twofold. Number one, our trip to Yellowstone, the folks who deal with the lodging say, we will tell you in the summer, and that's all they will tell you. And because they have a monopoly on the lodging, they can basically do that. So we know sometime this summer, we will be told. We just don't know when we will be told for the Yellowstone tour. For the other two tours that we're gonna be highlighting tonight, those are being worked out right now. We are sort of waiting to see a couple of pieces, also to figure out if we get any feedback from you, on some of these saying, hey, this, that, and the other thing. Failing that, uh, we are just gonna go ahead and finalize those details. The other two will come out sooner, certainly by the 4th of July-ish. Yellowstone, 
this summer. That's all we have about Yellowstone. So that's why these are pending, but we're giving you some information tonight so that you may hold the spot. All right. So this is the first of the ones we're doing next year. Uh, the word tentative is on there by uh, mistake. It actually should say the dates. So the National Parks of South Florida is a definite yes. We know the dates, January 9th through 17th. We're gonna go see Everglades, Biscayne, and Dry Tortugas National Park in South Florida, National Parks set in South Florida. I am also trying to get us a program at a Big Cypress there in South Florida. It's not a national park, but it's a, a pretty neat place. So I'm hoping to get us in there as well. That part is pending. So I'm gonna expand on that in just a moment. We also have an optional add-on. This one came as an assertion from someone. And so I'm gonna give it a try. So after the trip to South Florida, we could just return back to Colorado or we could go to the most magical place on earth, which is of course, Disney World. It just happens. I'm sure this did not influence my decision at all. It just happens that if we did this add-on, I would have to go to Disney World for my birthday. And that'd be sad. Yeah, so all right. sad. It's so, so super sad. All right, let's go on. So this is the tentative itinerary. If you need us to send this to you, uh, please let me know. And I'm happy to send this to you in an email so that you may look at it more carefully. A lot of the details are missing from this. We only had basically one slide. You will either fly yourself into Key West or you're gonna fly yourself into Miami. We'll have the bus in Miami because that's where we're going to end. From there, we're gonna head into the Key West area. I am super happy to report they were only going to have over the duration three hotels. We're going to do, I think it's three nights in Key West. We're going to do four nights in the Homestead area. And then on our last night, we're going to stay in Miami for our departures the next day. During that time, we have time in those three national parks. Biscayne National Park is mostly water. So what I'm doing there, instead of forcing you all to go snorkeling, because you might not want to go snorkeling, uh, there are going to be options when we get to Biscayne on some of those aquatic activities. As a group, we're going to take a sail and learn all about the park. But some of the things where you actually get into the water and see the sharks and all that sort of stuff, that will be more up to you. The Disney World add-on, I've been many times. I'm going in June with some friends and their 12-year-old celebrating his birthday. So this is going to be an effort to translate my vast knowledge of Disney World into what I think would be a good and reasonably approached and reasonably paced uh, additional vacation there in Disney World. All right, so again, I'm happy to send you this if you'd like to see it in more detail via email. So just let me know. Okay, and of course, winter in Florida, how can you argue with that? You by this time are probably gonna have been a little fed up with some snow and some cold and some bleakness, and you're gonna to wanna to have some sun time. So the picture on the upper right-hand side, I took that picture, that sunset from Key West, and the picture on the left-hand side, I took that picture as well. That is Dry Tortugas National Park, which is someplace you don't go accidentally. It really is a fascinating place to visit. And here's some more pictures that I took. Uh, there I am at the lower right-hand side, enjoying the, the walk in the water. The picture on the upper right-hand side, that is out on the Dry Tortugas. So I'm actually standing in the fort. And the picture on the left-hand side with all the pelicans, that was when I went to the Everglades and did all these wonderful excursions and hikes and tram tours and saw the crocodiles. And uh, I am happy to say there weren't actually a lot of mosquitoes. So that was exciting. So these are just th things from a vacation that I had in South Florida. Okay, next is the Jewels of Winter in Yellowstone. This one is tentative. We have asked for the dates that you see here. We told them we were ahead of the deadline, so we got in correctly. These are the dates that I asked for, and I believe these are the dates we are likely to get. But until Zantara actually says yes, it is not certain. This is gonna be different from our previous trips. If you'd go ahead and go forward there, Michael. 
these are going to be uh, slightly different in that we are going to fly to and from Jackson. So we are going to include the flight to and from. This is going to give us a little bit more time in the Jackson area, actually. In previous trips, we've had to leave more quickly. So this is going to allow us to take a uh, an excursion into Grand Teton by snow coach van, which I've never done before, but it looks really interesting. Also, I will not be doing this because I don't like them. But for folks who do like them, we actually have a snowmobile tour. And get this, the snowmobile tour, which Michael will be going on, the snowmobile tour goes out into the woods and the mountains and all this stuff. And what do you find? A hot springs. And for those of you willing to do so, you then get out of your parkas, you already have your swimsuit on, and then you get into the hot spring. Now, I realize that might sound terrible because then it's gonna be cold when you get back out, but apparently it is hugely popular and a lot of fun. So again, I don't like snowmobiles, so I won't be going, but Michael will bravely lead that one. So again, here, if you want the uh, itinerary, let me know. And just some pictures from previous tours. So Michael is building this one out, so he's gonna cover this one. Yeah, so uh, from popular requests, uh, we are going to try to see the auroras up in Alaska. And so this is also a tentative date, just as Yellowstone is. We are looking at March 20th through the 25th, and uh, we will fly into Fairbanks. We will have four opportunities to see the auroras. Of course, it is not guaranteed. And so from those four nights, we will hope for the best that at least one of those nights, we will be able to see the Aurora Borealis, but uh, we have lots of opportunity. Um, this is one, I'll advance to the itinerary. This is one where we will fly in and out of Fairbanks and uh, working with a local company up there uh, to help us build this out. We'll have an Arctic Circle drive and exploration We'll have uh, several opportunities for auroras. We'll go to the uh, Chena Hot Springs. There'll be an ice museum. Uh, we'll have a few museums uh, there within Fairbanks, uh, some city tours. Um, but the focus of this tour is really uh, our opportunity to see the auroras. And uh, just as Kevin was mentioning, for any of those itineraries, <clears throat> excuse me, we are happy to email those to you. Uh, at the end of this presentation, I will walk you through uh, registering for the interest list. And so if you are on that interest list, uh, you will receive the itinerary from us automatically. And as more information becomes available, we will uh, be in contact with you. Okay, so those are the three early 2023 winter tours that we wanted you to uh, kind of get in your mind. We are planning for it. We are getting ready for 2023. And so uh, again, at the end of this presentation, I'm going to show you how to register for the interest list. You will find all three of those tours on our website. And uh, when they are available for registration, you may pay your deposit and get your spot uh, on any of those tours. For all three of those, uh, space will be somewhat limited so you'll uh you know joining us tonight you're the first to know about these three trips you can be the first on the list uh when they are available for registration we have other exciting things that are going to be new for us this year and into next year and uh, one of them are our treasure boxes and so we have uh, three new uh, treasure boxes these are self-guided tours they come in a box uh, with goodies from local uh, companies that kind of aid you in your journey. One is already out and available now. It came out in February. It is the Golden Glow of Love. This is our date night in Golden, uh, partnered with Golden History Tours. And so you may take uh, an evening or a day outing there in Golden. You get gift cards for restaurants, uh, for drinks, entrees, appetizers, desserts. And uh, you have a self-guided tour packet. I actually have one here for Golden uh, that takes you around the uh, downtown area there. Our next box, this will be coming out in the next uh, couple of weeks, is a tour down in Pueblo. 
So this is a driving tour about three to four hours in length. And uh, it's an in-depth exploration of Pueblo. And even within this tour, there is plenty more to explore. Uh, we could build many packets for Pueblo just as we've done for Denver. Um, so this is sort of our introductory uh, tour or trip uh, for Pueblo. It is uh, a larger box uh, similar to the one that you see in the bottom right corner. Uh, it's built for two people in mind, but of course you can take as many as you'd like that fit in your vehicle and uh, journey around, learn the history and legends and lore of Pueblo. And then our third tour uh, for the treasure boxes, this will be coming out in the summer. It is an adventure in Fort Collins. So we're taking you north, tour around the Fort Collins area. Uh, you'll see Horse Tooth Reservoir, Old Town, the CSU campus, uh, similar to Pueblo. There's plenty to explore up there. So uh, it will be sort of an introduction to Fort Collins with that box. Uh, so for all of these, if you are subscribed to our email list, you're gonna receive the information of when you're able to purchase these, uh, they will be listed on our website. Um, and of course, should you ever have questions, you may reach out to uh, Kevin and uh, he's happy to provide extra information for you. You may also reach out to me, but he didn't put my contact information on there. So you're gonna have to find that on the website, I suppose. <laughs> Okay, Kevin, what are personalized adventures? So you tell us what you want to do and we build a trip for you. They're succinct. Oh, that is so succinct. We have a commercial for this and- It's uh, appalling. It is not, <laughs> it is wonderful. I love it. If you love Kevin, uh, no. <laughs> go and see this commercial. He wouldn't let me show it on the presentation tonight. So I'm gonna tell you about it where you may find it online. It's on our YouTube channel as well. It uh, gives you way more information than Kevin's succinct uh, explanation of what a personalized adventure is. But you may be interested in touring a place that is not in our lineup for the year. And you may want to go with your own group of friends or just yourself with your honey bunny. So we are happy to design a trip for you. Uh, as long as we know the place, um, we can build that out. So we do trips everywhere. As Kevin mentioned, uh, you could want to go to Disney World on your own. He's happy to help build a trip out for you. If you want to see some amazing hiking spots in northern New Mexico or southern Colorado, we'll build that trip for you. If you want to go to New Orleans, we'll build that trip for you. Uh, you could do a honeymoon in Breckenridge. That's this photo that you see on the right. We built that trip out uh, for that couple. So uh, on top of our group tours, our treasure boxes, we do this custom uh, experience for you with the personalized adventure. And you may take Kevin along for the ride with you as your own personal guide, or we can find some guides for you while you're down in that area. Um, so before we get to this, I'm going to show you now how to register for these 2023 tours interest lists. So I'm going to pull up my web browser here. So if you go to treasureboxtours.com, and that's the screen you should be looking at, you will see a new um, tab here for 2023 group tours. So when you click on that, this is the page it's going to take you to. And as you scroll down, you're going to see the three tours that we talked about in this presentation. And it's going to have the dates on there, as you see for yellow or uh, Florida, not tentative, actual days. These are the dates that we are traveling down to Florida. From there, you just click this button for each tour or the one that you are interested in. And when you click on that, it's going to take you to a new page here where you may enter your name, an email, a phone number, one or the other, an email or phone number. Uh, one of those would be great just uh, so we have a way to contact you when this information is available. And then you may select the tours uh, that you are interested in, you'll hit submit. And then that lets us know, hey, I wanna go on Florida and then we'll reach out to you uh, when it's available for registration. We'll email you those itineraries that you saw on the PowerPoint and uh, any other information uh, that you need for that. As Kevin mentioned, the itineraries that you saw there are brief. And so we will have more detailed itineraries uh, as those become available. Um, also, uh, through our website, you'll see those 2022 tours that Kevin mentioned earlier. We do still have space available on a few of those. 
Uh, so you may still browse through. Uh, we also have day tours on here that are still available. If you see sold out, we're sorry, they were really popular. We'll try to run it again in the future. Otherwise, uh, you are able to register for any of those 2022 tours while we do still have some space and um, then personalize the adventure. So when you click on this tab, it's gonna give you some extra information. And then there's that lovely commercial. You just click that play button. I won't do it right now since Kevin Thank you. would not <laughs> like me to do that. But if you'd like to watch this uh, awesome commercial, uh, just click that play button from our website. You can also find us on YouTube. Um, this uh, presentation is recorded. So we will share that out to you. Uh, we've recorded our other presentations. So if you go to our YouTube channel, you may see all of these uh, presentations that we have done in the past. Um, we have our Denver Through the Decades presentation series that we are running through right now. If you are not already a part of that, you may join us and you can catch up from the decades that we have covered. I believe we've done 1860s through the 80s. Um, so this uh, upcoming month at the end of April, it's gonna be April 28th, six o'clock, uh, we have Denver through the decades, the 1890s. And so those are all free presentations. You may register online. It's uh, similar to this where you get a uh, Zoom presentation, a uh, full hour of Kevin talking about the history of Denver in the 1890s. And we will have that running all the way through the end of the year, through the 1970s. And then in 2023, we will continue on up through the 2020s so yeah uh, crazy yeah um so that's basically everything we have uh for this presentation uh just a sneak peek into 2023 sort of what's coming up in the next few months as well uh so are there any questions for us probably more so for kevin he he's been the the lead on building all of these but if you have any questions feel free to enter them in the chat box and uh we will address those it's true. So I realize you might not have any questions. This was meant to be sort of a quick down and dirty intro to what we have coming up next winter. So those again will come available this summer. And we, yeah, we'll start it out. We don't want to wait till November to announce them. So those are out. The chat window is open. If you have any questions, please shout. Otherwise, uh, not taking too much of your time tonight. And uh, otherwise, yes, thank you for joining and we'll see you out there. Oh, yeah. if we miss the decades presentations, will they be available on the website? So those have been recorded. I may either send them to you as a link or they are available on the website, yes. Yeah, if you send us an email, let us know uh, which ones you missed and we're happy to send those links out to you. And while we have the time here, I'm just gonna scroll back and go to some of those itineraries just to give you another glance. Um, you may be registering through our website right now for, Thank the, you, Karen. <laughs> for the trip. So this will just give you another opportunity to see those before we email them out. So this is the Florida one. I'll leave so this yes. up for a minute. In Florida, we fly into Miami or Key West. For those of you who fly into Miami as I will, we're basically leaving for Key West immediately. We're gonna be right in Old Town Key West. So you're going to be right next to everything. And there is time built in for you to go to the beach and such. So we're not going to run you ragged. From there, we're going to transfer to, over toward Homestead, as I said. Here also, we're trying not to run you ragged. That is the jumping off point for the two national parks. I mentioned earlier, uh, Big Cypress. I'm trying to do an astronomy program there because I've never done an astronomy program in a swamp. So that's going to be super exciting. And this was Michael's idea. Instead of doing a farewell dinner, we're going to do a food tour of Art Deco Miami and all those hotels and restaurants right along the beach. And we're going to do a food tour from place to place. And that will be our farewell dinner. And I found us a package. It looks pretty impressive. For the Disney World add-on, I will tell you it's uh, not the cheapest thing in the world to go to Disney World. Definitely not, but I will be able to advise you on the best way to spend your time. 
All right, so there's that itinerary. I have to, my computer is nice and slow. Well, it's so that you may linger. That's right. And then here's so, the Yellowstone. In Yellowstone, our lodging in Jackson is still not certain. If we do uh, get the dates we want, which we certainly hope we do, in Yellowstone, we'll have the Old Faithful Snow Lodge. For those of you who haven't done this tour with us before, what we do is we get you to the park. You have two full days in the park, but you choose what you do with them. So when this will actually go live, you will then probably want to sign up for activities, snowshoeing and all of the numerous excursions that the park itself runs. Those will be those two full days in there. Even if you don't want to do an excursion, there's plenty that you may do right around the, the Old Faithful Snow Lodge. Of course, you may see Old Faithful. Some of these other things are ones I've done before, like the National Elk Refuge, always very nice, the museum. The brewery tour, the snowmobile tour, the Grand Teton van tour, those are ones I haven't done before and we're adding because we have the more time since we're flying. And let's yeah, as, at, as it says on the itinerary, the flights for this trip will be included as a part of the tour package. The flights for Florida are not included. You are flying individually on your own. Yeah, we left that open so you could use points. We're kind of experimenting to see which ones people like better. And then those nice photos. Stay away from the bison. Stay away. <laughs> There's don't this want to be awful on the book called Death in Yellowstone. It's, it's a great book, but an awful book too. <laughs> yeah, don't be a part of that book. And then this is for the Auroras of Alaska. Um, again, we fly together as a group to Fairbanks uh, from Denver. We have, uh, so that winter Arctic Circle Aurora Drive that is uh, going from Fairbanks up uh, to the Arctic Circle, big full day of touring. And then that evening, uh, there will be an opportunity for Aurora's viewings. We don't know what the weather is going to be like, all of that. So we have... Uh, worked with our local company there for four opportunities. But as we mentioned before, it is not guaranteed. We, we may not guarantee that you will see the Auroras, but we are trying our best with four days that at least one of those days you will see them. It's also a point where you're more likely to, there are actually times each year as the earth is going around when certain latitudes become higher likelihood so March is the time when Fairbanks is at that kind of key spot. So throughout the year, it is there's one in the spring and one in the autumn where that area comes right into the perfect alignment. So you get your best chance. So we really are doing everything to try to get you your best opportunity. Definitely. All right. Well, with that, uh, if there are no further questions, uh, thank you again for joining us this evening. Uh, check us out online. Feel free to send us emails. and Shout uh, with questions. Yeah. We're looking forward to seeing you for those that are signed up for 2022 tours. Otherwise, we'll see you in 2023. All righty, folks. Go get some dinner and good night. <laughs> good night. Thank you. <laughs>